rise up. It's time for another episode of Spartivation. Your podcast source for inspiration and motivation to get you through your Spartan body transformation. Here now is your host, the Spartan Doctore. Spartan Doctore, champion of growth. It is a glorious day to train and grow. I am Ryan Masters, the Spartan Doctore, certified strength and conditioning specialist, here to provide you with motivation and inspiration as you journey through your Spartan body transformation. Welcome to another episode of Spartivation, broadcast directly to you from Trifection Studios. Remember, if you find these videos helpful, please be sure to subscribe and leave a review so I know to produce more of them for you. Today we are continuing our dive into the Spartan Body Blueprint, which teaches you how to build a ripped Spartan physique in five hours a week or less. You can download this for free at Spartivation.com. And We've been talking about the Spartan ethos, which, is, which are the B qualities that you want to adopt. And today we're going to take a look at being sparfective. And sparfective is, you know, since a modern Spartan is purpose driven and does not tolerate wasted time, effort, or resources, he discovers the quickest, most effective path to reach his goals and then works to make them more efficient. He continually seeks leverage and harnesses the power of the 80 20 law. So, yeah, this is, you know, one of my favorite quotes is from a very, very smart business management consultant and his you know his name was Peter Drucker and he said that you know efficiency is doing things right effectiveness is doing the right things and it, you know example of that is is you I'm sure you may have heard the story of of putting a ladder climbing a ladder to reach the top only to realize that it was leaning against the wrong wall. You know, so you were efficient, you got to the top of the ladder, but the effectiveness was off because it wasn't, you didn't end up where you wanted to be. And, you know, it's interesting that one of my good buddies uh, has mentioned a couple times, and several other people have mentioned, but a good, you know, good friend of mine, I've known for a long time, we were having a discussion at one point, and he, he just mentioned that, he's like, you know, you never get mad. Uh, I think this this was a point of where I had just someone had just stolen five thousand dollars of a home theater equipment from me when I was going to start my first business. I was selling it on Craigslist, and I was an idiot. And I, my mom told me not to, but I I took a check for it, and the check was fraudulent, and the guy you know totally ripped me off, and the courts like didn't pursue him, and so basically he got my awesome system, and got off. Uh, Scott free and I wasn't you know obviously I wasn't like high-fiving the dude or happy about it but my friend was like amazed he's like why aren't you so you know why aren't you pissed off and and so he just you know just kind of commenting on that and I was like man you know just and and it wasn't until later when I was on a date with this chick and she asked me you know what makes you mad is there anything that makes you mad and at first I was like, no, I was like, I just, you know, I just don't really get mad. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, oh, you know what? There is something that drives me nuts. And what it is, is, is waste and lack of effectiveness. Like it, that, that gets me, I just get, I, my head's going to explode. Uh, now the problem there, not problem, but the, you know, my perception of, ineffectiveness is where it can get tricky, you know, get tricky. Cause if I think something's ineffective, but that's not actually the case, I'm still getting upset. But the point is effective, lack of effectiveness or waste just drives me nuts. Like waiting in lines because somebody is just not waiting, you know, waiting in lines. Okay. You know, what I do is I have my iPhone app, my iPhone, I'll pull it out, open up the Kindle and boom, I'm reading a book. So now that time is, is not being wasted. Um, you know, traffic, I'm sure you can relate to traffic and in the reason for traffic, being if it was rubbernecking so everybody wants to stop and just look at the cop who pulled some you know look at the person who got pulled over by the cops no reason for that at all except people just being nosy so so the effectiveness is just really i mean i could go on and on and i we don't i don't want to delve into that too deep because this would be then turn into a two-year podcast uh just this episode but the point is the effectiveness is really you know that's kind of the heart and soul of why i started all this you know fitness coaching and training that i do is because it just I see so much waste out there and it drives me nuts. I mean, it just makes me mad. And and the problem is, one of the problems is not that some of the training that you hear, the tips that you hear are wrong, you know, but it's just they're not the most effective way. And so it's like a complete waste of time. And so that's why, you know, I want to at least present to you 
what in my experience has been the most effective way and that way you can decide for yourself hey i want to do this or, or hey i don't and so let me give you th- just three quick methods that you can use to be more effective you know in your training whether you're pursuing a spartan body or not this is the way these are three methods and strategies you can use and number one we've already talked about but effectiveness requires a purpose and a goal to measure against remember the goal is kind of the destination of where you want to go and the purpose is kind of the why behind it and if you don't have those then there's no way to know if you're being effective because essentially you're saying I don't have a wall to put the ladder against I'm just gonna climb this ladder and see what happens and that's no way no way to get anywhere near a Spartan physique or any type of improved physique. Now we all start, and this is kind of the difference, when you start having a purpose and a goal, that's when you've made the switch from exercising and working out to training. When you're training, you are now working, you are moving and focusing your energy towards a purpose and becoming effective because you're directing your resources toward toward an end goal. If you're just going to the gym and just throwing weights around and just kind of exercising, I mean, hey, Let's congratulate the fact that you're you're making a change and you've started. That's good, but you got to step to the next level here eventually and start training, which requires a purpose and a goal to measure against. So that's step one. Uh, step two is use barbells and free weights. You know, when we're talking effectiveness, that is how that is the most effective way to get your body to respond and build muscle and burn fat. Can you get in shape by doing cardio, or can you lose weight by doing some cardio? Sure. Can you lose? Can you build some muscle? by doing push-ups and bodyweight exercises, yes. You know, I was a gymnast, so that's not to say that these these don't help, but if you want the most effective universal benefit when it comes to your training, you need to learn how to use barbells and do exercises like squats, deadlifts. Everyone knows to do bench press. I know I don't have to tell you to do bench press because you're already doing it, but squats, deadlifts, pull-ups, dips, leg lifts you know these are the core exercises that you have to focus on and do and you may not know how to do them now and that's okay but the time you invest in learning how to properly do these exercises is going to give you so much more roi in terms of muscle growth and development and strength and health than if you take that same time and you wasted doing a bunch of stupid stuff like trx bands and you know random body weight you know random body weight exercises bouncy you know people stand on those balls like all that kind of stuff like come on like we want to stay effective and focus focus your energy so it's not being being wasted the the third is you want to learn and master you know just continue to be aware of the law of 80 20 and this is from this goes way back from a guy also called the Pareto principle is the guy who discovered it and what it tells you is that 80% of the results or outcome in any situation comes from or is derived from 20% of the inputs. Now, so what does that mean? That means that, for example, let's take a look at your bedroom. Okay, you spend 80% of your time in 20% of the room, right? Where is that? It's on your bed. In that whole room of all that space in the bedroom, you spend 80% of your time in 20% of the room on the bed. Same thing if you are looking at movies. Okay, if we're looking at movies, this law, I mean, this law applies everywhere. So if we look at movies, 80% of the revenue generated across every single movie comes from 20% of the movies, the top 20%. And those are the ones in Hollywood usually that you hear from. But there's tons of other movies that bring in a little bit of revenue, but 80% of that revenue comes from the 20%. If you run a business or you're in a business or you're in sales, this is so key. You know, 80% of your sales comes from 20% of your customers. If you look at the list, that is going to help pan out. Now, it's not always, it's called the law of 80-20. It's not always 80-20. It could be 90-10. It could be 70-30 or 60-40 or some some percentage but the the point is that's not the point the point is that it's a disproportionate amount meaning that there is a an area that you can invest more of your time and get a greater return on so going to the example of the the customers if you are getting 80% of your revenue from 20% of your customers well a good way to increase your your business is to look at those 20% of the customers and see can we offer them more service a, a premium option can we find more customers like these you know that's how you take 80 20 and really leverage it so let's so that's some real world examples well let's take it to training okay so 80% of your change from your physical body and the mental confidence and everything that comes from that is is going to 
derive from 20% of your training, right? 20% of the exercises. And so that's why you want to focus on those core 20% and get better at them than trying to do all these other little exercises that, yes, I mean, they're not bad. You know, doing uh, doing hammer bicep curls is not bad, and you want to use them every once in a while, but it's it's part of that 80% that doesn't deliver much of the results. So you don't want to focus your time there. And same thing with food intake, right? 80% of the changes is going to come from 20% of the food intake. And so you want to focus on those 20% of foods, you know, like, you know, chicken and meat and, and organic vegetables and fruits. And you know, focus on just getting that core stuff. You don't need fancy recipes or anything like that. Just focus on that 80-20 first and build out from there. So those are the three strategies that you can use to be more effective in your training. And and that way, you're just going to see better results and stay motivated. And, and you're also always going to remember, never retreat, never surrender, and keep moving.